Price elasticity of supply, shortened to PES, measures the responsiveness of producer supply to a change in price. The equation to calculate the coefficient of price elasticity of supply is PES equals the percentage change in quantity supplied over the percentage change in the price of the good. For example, if as a result of a 10% increase in the price of coffee beans this year, the supply of coffee beans next year increases from 10 million tonnes to 15 million tonnes, the price elasticity of supply is plus 5.0. This is a positive value, as the price of a commodity rises, producers are encouraged by the expectation of higher profits, which creates an incentive to supply more. Hence the sign for PES will be positive. Elasticity of supply is influenced by the following. The availability of factors of production, factors for short. When factors are unavailable or in short supply, elasticity of supply is reduced. The mobility of factors. Mobility increases elasticity of supply. The ease with which factors can be substituted if there is a shortage of one factor. The levels of stocks that exist. Higher stock levels increase PES. The extent of spare capacity. The greater the spare capacity, the greater the PES. The time period under consideration. PES increases with time as it becomes easier to acquire factors, complete production and distribute to the market. PES can vary considerably, depending on how many of these criteria are met. PES can be shown graphically with the help of a supply curve. Here we can see that the gradient of the supply curve A is steep, indicating a low PES, where quantity supplied increases by a smaller percentage than the initial price increase from P to P1. In contrast, supply curve B is flat indicating that the firm is able to respond to changes in market price and PES is greater than 1, with the percentage increase in quantity supplied greater than the price increase P to P1. The three extreme cases are perfectly elastic, where the supply curve is flat, perfectly inelastic, where the supply curve is vertical and equal to 1, shown in curve C, which is a linear supply curve coming out of the origin. Price elasticity of supply is a significant concept in economics and has several applications. For example, in the case of agriculture, the short and long run elasticities of supply are very different, which creates the tendency for prices to become unstable. Typically, in the short run, the quantity of most agricultural and other primary commodities cannot be altered until the next growing season, so that the short run supply curve is vertical and PES equals zero. However, in the long run, it is possible to respond to the market by planting more or fewer crops which enhance the producer's ability to supply. The cobweb model shows how elasticity of supply creates the potential for volatile prices. If the market starts with a stable equilibrium at A, a short-run shock can push the short-run supply curve to S1. Equilibrium price is pushed up to P1 with a new equilibrium at B. The higher price encourages farmers to plan to produce more next year, at Q2, with short-run supply curve at S2. However, this drives the price down to P2, which in turn discourages production next year. The effect of this is that the price is driven up to P3. The result is that prices become increasingly volatile. Price volatility is seen as a market failure in that next year's output is determined by this year's price rather than by prices prevailing at the time, and the market moves towards disequilibrium rather than a stable equilibrium. This is one of the reasons why agricultural markets are commonly regulated and supported by governments. It has been estimated that the short-run PES for cotton production in the US is just 0.3 whereas in the long run it increases to 1.0. As a result, cotton prices can become very unstable. Elasticity of supply also influences the competitiveness of producers. A producer who can respond quickly to changes in market conditions will have a competitive advantage in its market. In labour markets, differences in the elasticity of supply of labour affect the wage rate of different types of labour as well as affecting the employability of labour. The more inelastic the supply of labour in a particular market segment, the greater the wage rate. 
For example, the lengthy training required to become a highly skilled worker, such as an airline pilot, will reduce the elasticity of supply and raise the wage rate to W in comparison with a less skilled worker, such as a cleaner, who will only earn a wage rate of W1. The elasticity of supply of labor will also affect the impact of any minimum wage, with a more elastic supply causing a greater loss of jobs if the minimum is set well above the market wage rate. Furthermore, PES can have a bearing on a country's macroeconomic supply side performance. This is especially significant in a globalized world, where successful exporters need to be dynamic and respond quickly to changes in demand and other market conditions. This also helps explain why global prices of manufactured goods have tended to be stable or fall in the long run. Manufacturing firms can have excess capacity built into their production units and can store products and inputs as well as substitute factors and exploit the global mobility of factors. This means that globalized multinationals are able to respond very quickly to changes in market conditions, including changes in prices. This, in turn, keeps prices in check. This is one of the reasons why factor mobility is seen as a key element in a country's productivity and its overall supply side performance. To see more videos, go to www.economicsonline.co.uk.